Shout out to Felix Grey for sponsoring this update. Their lenses filter blue light and eliminate glare from screens without the telltale yellow tint or color distortion of other computer glasses. Give your eyes a break they deserve and get yours with free shipping and free returns at felixgrayglasses.com slash no. Welcome to The Know, I'm Mika. Nintendo made quite the splash in the toy market earlier this month when they announced Labo, the cardboard peripherals that turn your Switch into pretty much anything. Now, more members of the press are starting to get their hands on them and have reported some pretty wild findings. One of the more interesting experiments was the ToyCon Garage feature, which allows you to basically make your own custom cardboard robots. It works by using several Labo kits together with a node-based system to create unique programs with very simple commands. IGN writes that Nintendo showed off one example of the motorcycle Labo kit that got edited so that the game's controls moved a remote control car instead. We can no doubt expect the internet to get very weird and very fun with that in the future. Is the next Assassin's Creed game already starting to leak? Well, rumors are floating around that the next game's codename is Assassin's Creed Dynasty and that the series is going to take place in China, thanks to a PSU report yesterday. In the report, PSU claims a source at Technicolor, a studio in India that assists game companies with animation, told them that Technicolor was hard at work on something called Assassin's Creed Dynasty. At the time, this led to speculation that Assassin's Creed Dynasty meant the game was going to be set in China. However, it's important to note that since the story ran, there have been some doubts about the accuracy of that, with some like Kotaku's Jason Schreier saying that the codename might be accurate, but the China part is made up. Also, PSU clarified that their source formally worked at Technicolor, so basically we might have named, learned a codename. Or nothing. Probably nothing. The Master Chief Collection is finally getting some TLC after years and years of being broken, but of course this is the internet, and now some gamers are mad that the collection is getting fixed because it might affect the development of Halo 6. All right, internet. However, 343 has clarified that this is not the case. Community manager Sketch wrote in a new blog post, a small but experienced team here within 343 has taken on the charter of supporting many of Halo's legacy titles, with MCC currently being their number one priority. There's a wealth of experience and expertise on the team, including engineers, designers, and test leads who are intimately familiar with what's good and not so good with the Master Chief Collection. This team is completely separate from the broader 343 team working on the next Halo FPS title. There's zero over overlap or shared resources to ensure the larger game team can remain laser focused on the future. We all know that Borderlands 3 is in development, but Gearbox and publisher Take-Two have been content to offer nothing more than simple teases about the fact that it exists. And now, well, we have another very tiny tease. Take-Two said in a press release about its 2019 financial expectations that its success in the coming year is based off the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2 in October and a highly anticipated new title from one of 2K's biggest franchise. That puts Borderlands 3 coming sometime before March 2019, so maybe they'll announce it someday soon? Hopefully? Cross your fingers, everybody. Far Cry 5 just got way more enticing thanks to some pretty bonkers plans for the game's season pass. Ubisoft just announced three wildly different DLC packs for the title, including one with a Vietnam setting, another one with B-movie zombies, and the last fighting aliens on Mars. Those all give off some crazy blood dragon vibes in the best way possible, and I'm excited. But in addition to those DLC packs, the season pass will also come with Far Cry 3. Season pass owners will get that game a month before it releases on PS4 and Xbox One this summer, so if you've been on the fence about whether or not you wanted the season pass for Far Cry, well now you know what's in it. Far Cry 5 drops March 27th. Heads up, Sonic fans, it looks like a big announcement about the franchise is coming during South by Southwest next month, right here in Austin. Oh my god, is it already next month? According to a listing on the South by site, that announcement will come on a panel featuring a bunch of Sonic and Sega heads. The description reads, join the official team from Sega who are building Sonic's future as they give you an update on last year's strong performance of Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, as well as the world-exclusive first look at what comes next for the fastest blue hedgehog. Well, that's interesting, and it's worth noting that someone from Sega probably gave that description to event folks, which means it's legit. And there's no doubt that Sonic had a bit of a renaissance last year with Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, so we're definitely interested to see what they've got planned next. New Sonic Boom? Nah? No. A bunch of major balance changes are coming to Destiny 2. In a blog post, Bungie lead design Josh Hamrick talked about what we'll see in the update. They included buffing a lot of weapons, including shotguns, sniper rifles, hand cannon, and pulse rifles. Oh, and you're going to be able to move quicker too. The max ground speed for Guardians is indeed getting buffed, and super abilities will also recharge faster. Meanwhile, they're making some tweaks to power ammo in the Crucible as well. If you die with power ammo, now your opponents will have 30 seconds to pick it up, and Bungie is also reducing the respawn timers for 
for it. It's not exactly clear when the changes will take effect, but judging by Hamrick's wording, they'll be implemented within the next few months. We've got some more details about Year 3 of Rainbow Six Siege, which is set to kick off very soon. Ubisoft released a trailer that shed a little bit of more light on the Outbreak event. It's set in the town of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, inside a quarantine zone, and it revolves around some sort of mysterious infestation thanks to a crashed space capsule, and a parasite that turns anyone infected into monsters. As an operator, it's your job to keep those infected from breaking out of the quarantine zone. The event will also include 50 unique items, including lots of skins, of course. Outbreak kicks off on March 6th for PC, Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4. The guy who co-created Counter-Strike has been arrested for sexual exploitation of a child. Jess Cliff, who was a game designer at Valve, was booked into the King County Jail yesterday, and he's expected to have a bail hearing this afternoon. In a statement to Kotaku, Valve said that it suspended Cliff and said, we are still learning the details of what actually happened. Reports suggest he has been arrested for a felony offense. As such, we have suspended his employment until we know more. Fate of the Furious and Straight Outta Compton director F. Gary Gray has signed on for the new Men in Black that the studio is calling a relaunch, aka we don't want to pay Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones all the money to come back. Even though the most natural idea in the world would be for Will Smith to transition into the grizzled veteran agent position, Sony is unlikely to go the legacy sequel route according to Deadline. Instead, they'll be bringing in entirely new faces into the zany world of government agents policing crazy extraterrestrial life on Earth. You may remember Sony kicked around the idea of merging the Men in Black series with their Jump Street series, but this is not that movie, apparently. But we're still holding out hope that that is absolutely a batshit idea and it's still alive somewhere in the halls of Sony. Because come on, Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill joining the Men in Black squad, I, I mean, I'd watch it like five times. The big game is coming up this weekend, and you know what that means. Quirky commercials and big trailer debuts. Yes, Super Bowl Sunday's already locked in new looks at Mission Impossible Fallout and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but the biggest debut will be the first trailer for Solo A Star Wars Story. Not just the first trailer, but the first official look anywhere of the notoriously troubled production, which hits theaters in just three months. Whether we get the full trailer or a cut down glimpse is still unknown. The full trailer is supposed to be debuting the following Monday on Good Morning America, so either way, we'll have many seconds of young Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Lando, and the Millennium Falcon to step through frame by frame while the rest of the world, you know, sports is and stuff. Well, that's all the news we have today. Remember to comment on any of your favorite news stories in the comments below. And if you're new around here, like this video, subscribe to the know. Thanks to Felix Gray for sponsoring this update. If you use PCs a lot for work, or like me, for a, a lot of gaming, you can notice a bit of strain after a few hours. Felix Gray offers glasses with lenses specifically designed to filter blue light and eliminate glare, which are two big culprits behind that eye strain. The glasses themselves are crafted from premium Italian acetate, and their blue light filtering material is built into the lens, so they're effective but don't have the yellow tint or color distortion you sometimes see in other computer glasses. Right now, they're available in non-prescription and reading glasses, but Keep an eye out for prescription versions because we hear those are coming soon. If you want to try them out and give your eyes a break, Felix Grey offers free shipping and also free returns, so if you decide they're not for you, you are not out a penny. Get yours at felixgrayglasses.com slash no.